Alam niyo po, nung 2005, nung bago ako lumipat, at bagong-bago pa lang ako sa ABS-CBN, isa sa mga unang programa na nag-feature ng aking life story ay ang kanyang show called People. And I will never forget that experience dahil sa kanya. Very direct questions. You know, 16 years after, I'm very grateful and I'm very honored. Now I get to hear her story. She's one of the most trusted and one of the most respected broadcast journalists we have here in the country. We have with us today, Ms. Cess Drillo. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you, Tony. I remember... I had the temerity to ask you if you were still a virgin. <laughs> and I said, yes. Yeah. And I, I was. was. I was shocked, no? Was I? No. No naman. Parang tumangulang kayo. <laughs> I think dalawa lang po kayo nagtanong sa akin ng question na yun. If I was still a virgin, you and 700 Club Asia. <laughs> At least I have something in ko. O, tamo. Anyway, I was reading about your story, Mrs. And nabalita ko na soldier pala yung tatay niyo. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in the military, yeah. Army. Army. So, nung lumaki kami, sanay kami na wala siya. Tapos pagdadating siya, nag impose ng mga disiplina, yung mga bawal. Very ganun. military. Yeah. Na hindi kami sanay kasi my mom naman was more um, liberal sa parang kung ano yung gusto mo. We moved to Manila from Baguio kasi. Sa Baguio kami lumaki. Taga Baguio po talaga kayo. Yeah, I was born there. Ilan po kayo magkakapatid? Apat. Apat. And I'm the eldest. You're the eldest. Yeah. Tapos, nagkaroon kayo ng fascination sa news because of your grandfather, di ba? Yes, yes. He was a news junkie. Yung parang nagbabasa ng dyaryo from front to back. I guess, hindi ko matrace eh kung saan yung kilig maging journalist. One is, lagi kong sinasabi, o si Sarah kasi ako. And then there was a time in Baguio, I remember this very distinctly. Nagka landslide malapit sa amin where we lived in Baguio. Ano ko nakikinig sa radio blow by blow kung may na rescue na bang mga tao gusto ko pang pumunta sa site na Ilang taon kayo noon? I was grade 4 siguro. Gusto kong pumunta sa site, gusto kong tignan anong itsura ng landslide yung kasi medyo natatanaw from our house. Pero hmm. syempre pinagbawalan ako dahil maliit pa naman ako. Hmm. So may yung mga ganun, I think yung mga mga incidents na yun na, sa life ko naka Parang influence, influence me to become a to journalist. To take this path. Yeah. Yeah. Pero hindi po natin napag-usapan yun sa father nyo. How old were you when he passed away? I was... Well, I remember I just gave... I must have been 30. Kasi mm -hmm. I just gave birth to my youngest son. May strike sa Leyte, sa Tongonan plan sa Leyte. Nag-helicopter siya. Nag-helicopter siya. Pauwi na sila from Leyte to Cebu. Tapos nag crash. And yeah. then? And then. Was his body found? Never. But we were told this anecdote. I was told this anecdote that I told my mom a night before the crash. They were talking about death. And the pilot said, You know, if I die, I want my ash, my remains distributed to <gasps> members of my family. Yeah. And um, big, so they would remember me. And my dad said, You know, if your family loves you, that's not, the remains are not important. Para bang he spoke to us? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, lacking comfort for us. Alam mo, it was so strange because, maram, well, very rare, I guess, na hindi makita yung remains, yeah. di ba? So, very awkward yung pag magmimisa. Yung wake. Broadcast journalist na po kayo. Yeah, naman. yes. So, 1985, you started your career as a broadcast journalist. So, MBS4, Maharlika, Maharlika Broadcasting System. Hoy, ba't mo alam? Ay, syempre po, research ko yun. <laughs> Kala ko naman dahil ano, oo nga. But it was the coverage that you did with Gringo Honasan yeah, that, that got the attention of ABS-CBN. Yes, yes. Tapos they hired you. Yeah. So, ilang years po kayo nagtrabaho sa ABS-CBN? 30 plus 30 over plus years. years. Yeah. But I was also reading about um, what happened to you in your journey. You had experience follow with sexual harassment. Yeah. There were many of us who had the same experience. And we met. And we were all going to file a complaint. And then, but we all got scared and left only one person to complain. And we felt, I felt so guilty. So I revealed it later on. So alam ko yung feeling na 
Yung bakit ngayon ka lang nagsasalita? Ang tagal-tagal ng panahon, totoo yun na hindi mo, hindi mo agad masasabi. Siguro dahil you were afraid to lose your job. Many reasons. Pag tiba yung may mga ganong experiences, meron yung trauma, triggers, mm. And Alam mo yung ano, yung dala-dala ko for the longest time, yung amoy ng lugar kung saan nangyari. <laughs> Kasi in the old Hinaras. newsroom, meron kaming napaka, parang pantry na may sink, na may lumang dyaryo na nakatambak, or kaya mga, mga pinggan na hindi nahuhugasan. Yung, yung ganon, so that smell, na medyo amoy ipis, yung ganon, that smell stayed with me for a very long time. Yung parang, but yun lang naman. He called you. He called me in that small room. Yes, and you know, tried to French kiss me, mm. and I ran away out. I I I ran. So, na may nakapansin. Hindi pa pulang pula yung lipstick mo. Parang nabura. Siyempre tumaro, tumakbo ko sa banyo kasi parang kalat kalat, de ba yung ganon? Tas biglang binura ko. Yun lang naman. You know, also late he's a he was a colleague, so siyempre parang hirap, di ba? And boss. So what did you learn about yourself after that experience? The guilt na I didn't na, you know, the job was more important than complaining. Let's talk about this, the very famous 2008 incident. Parang that really changed your life. Yeah. Um, yesterday was... My 13th birthday. I'm only 13 years old. After that abduction. <laughs> yeah, because I consider this... My second life. Really? Yeah. But I was reading the transcript of what happened to you. Parang everybody pala, even your bosses, were telling you not to go and not to do it. That interview. At the last minute. Why did you want to go? I wanted to go because everybody was speculating who is the new leader of the Abu Sayyaf. Not everybody was telling me. Ganito yung nangyari doon. Yes. Bata ko nakarating doon. Siyempre, inokay naman ng, ng why, why was I able to bring my team. It was approved. But the night before, Yan. sabi, tumawag si Chari Villa na, huwag ka nang tumuloy. Bigay mo na lang yung handicam, yung maliit na camera, para magbigay na lang sila ng message ni, nila. Okay, so June 2008, you flew to Sulu. Yeah. You stayed in a parang dorm or yeah, parang hostel. Ho hostel, yeah. and then the next day, mm. this guy comes up to your yeah place. because we were already actually we set the plan na okay. So yeah. in invite na kayo tara mm, na tara na. Pero wala nung sinabi niyang tara na wala kang kasi di ba may women's instinct? May instinct tayo. I feel like that's our spirit telling us there's something wrong or you're going to be in danger. Did you feel it in your heart na may malina? No, not Nung yet. sinabi niyang tara? No. Uh, Gusto ko pa rin pumunta talaga. Because it's a, it's a story. Yeah. That you wanted to call her. Yes. For one, um, marami kasi, may guide kami, Professor Dinampo, who seemed to, who appeared to me very close to the Abu Sayyaf. So maraming, well, we were after several revelations. There was, you know, many kidnappings happening in, um, May eh? kidnapping sa happening tas nandoon ako. No? Anyway, na parang baka may proof sila na kasabot talaga ang military, ang LGU, yung parang they're going to disclose this. So I wanted to get that information. And first hand, yeah. face to face, yeah. yes, yun yung yeah. makikita At saka, yung Also, the new leader was a former MNLF uh, commander supposedly who is not as extreme as the previous uh, leader. So parang there were, there was hope for maybe a peaceful, parang baka they could negotiate with the government, something like that. So there were many, parang ang daming interesting na pwedeng sila. Facets. Yeah. Ang story. Correct. Oo, oh, oh, na pwedeng i-cover. Yeah. So you went Pero to... Pero alam ko, alam ko, that it was dangerous. I knew. But of course, I didn't realize na parang it was a trap. Where did you go? We Kung sinabi went, niyang tara. Oh, sumakay kami ng parang fiera, tapos aantayin daw namin ang aming safe conduct pass na tao. Kasi kaya nila sinasabing safe conduct, con safe conduct pass siya 
kamag-anak siya ng isa sa mga nandun. Mm -hmm. So may ganun silang practice eh. If you're related, parang they'll, they'll respect. May mga practice sila na kikidnapin nila yung kamag-anak para may marirelease sila. May mga ganun sila. Or kung may, walang mangyayari sa'yo kasi kamag, kasama mo ang kamag-anak ng isa sa mga oh, member ng apasok. Parang merong assurance oh, kayo yes. kung mare. Nasasama so, sa inyo. Correct. So dumating siya. Okay. So okay, tara na. May safe conduct pass na tayo. Tapos nakakatuwa pa, medyo nag, I let my, uh, parang I was relaxed na, na nothing will come. Kasi bunot pa siya ng bunot ng mga pako, mga kung ano-ano. Yung parang Normal sa daan. Oh, Correct. Oh. Mamaya nawala na siya. When we stopped, ang lakas ng ulan, we stopped. Anong oras po ito ng umaga? The, um, parang this? after lunch or mga lunch yung yung oh. nasa fiera kami nagaantay. Tapos naglakad na kami. Tapos mga three or four ang lakas ng ulan. We stopped under, I can never forget this tree that was so beautiful um mangustin ang laki pala ng dahon ng mangustin <laughs> tapos nagduda na rin ako kasi ito pang isa that should have been also a warning sign for me na before na i mean a warning sign not to even do consider doing it kasi lagi nilang sinasabi pag pagkakausap mo na yung abo sa F, huwag kang magdala ng maraming pera huwag kang dala ng maraming alahas kasi baka arborin sa iyo or kukunin sa iyo. So I had a few maybe 100 pesos in my wallet but they got na all our things eh pati yung pati yung uh, cellphone para mm. lang for safekeeping. Okay. Na hindi ka mag magte-text kung sino na nasa kayo, 'di ba? Okay. Sabi ko pahingi nga ng bag ko parang meron ba akong titi make-up or whatever. Kasi syempre, naghahanda ako, no? Kasi Alam interview. Alam mo, retouch ako ng retouch. <laughs> Kasi nga, mag-i-interview na kayo. Correct! So, I'm down for yung ulan? Yeah! Nag-retouch na kayo. Oo. Oh, oh. Tapos, chine ko yung wallet ko, wala na yung pera. Hmm. Na, so, parang that warning na, di ba? Na nakawan ako. Yeah. So, we, we just kept walking pa rin. In fact, at that time, I was already thinking, what if we make a run for it? Kasi, nadadaanan pa namin mga bahay. Mga concrete pa yung mga daan eh. May gusto mo nang tumakbo? Yeah. Ah, na-feel mo na na gusto mo nang bumalik? Yeah, but then... Bakit di ka bumalik? Eh kung... Nisip ko, I will not even tell them, ayoko na. I will run. But parang, paano ko sisignalin yung cameraman ko? Ilan kayo nun? So sa parang, team nyo? Tatlo? Tatlo, okay. pero kasama namin si Professor Dinam. Okay. So I was, and where do I go? What, what, yeah. ano Saan baka mamako? Yun na nga eh, yun rin eh. Uh -oh. So tapos ang mali ko pang isang, in, in hindsight, gusto, ayokong ipakita na hindi ko kaya yung mga, yung lakad namin, ang layo, matarik, ang, i, ang ilaw lang namin, yung flashlight ng lighter. Yung, ang lately, yung nasa lighter lang, hindi yung sindi ah, yung, yeah. di ba may mga lighter na nasa ilalim eh. Uh -oh. Yun lang. Tapos ayaw kong ipakita na mahina ako. So, I keep pace with them. So, I was rushing to my kidnapping. In a way, I mean, yun yung parang talagang, ah, kasi sabi ni Professor, huwag masyadong mabilis. So, nakarating yata kami sa parang tuktok ng parang hill. Siguro, What time hating yun? gabi or lampas na eh. Twelve. Yeah, Past and I was 12. thinking, syempre, alalang-alala na ako, no? Iniisip ko, parang ano to, no? May mali na. Oo na inisip, hindi ako makakatulog kasi syempre from worry but from sheer exhaustion at saka yung natulugan na yung parang hot ang daming mga damit na ewan ko kung para bang mga ukay-ukay na damit ano ang mm. damit na halo-halo parang we just slept on a pile of clothes parang gano'n so, that was tapo. after 8 hours of walking trekking trekking yeah we'll pass, us, we'll pass streams Meron pa ngang napatid pa ako sa isang parang bato. At ano, uphill siya. So pagdating nyo po dun sa parang nipahat, nakatulog kayo, what happened the next day? Ayun, di, parang nagtitinginan na lang kami sa hut na yun. Ha. Hindi kami nagsasalita, pero parang, parang malabo na to. Parang, kasi pupuntahan daw namin si Commander dun sa ano na yun. Tapos tinawag ako, tapos um, sabi sa akin, Uh, kidnap for ransom na to.
ang pagkidnap sa news journalist na sina Cesc Drillon sa Sulu. So, nung sinabi po sa inyo, kidnap for ransom na to, Sabi, ano ka agad yung naramdaman oh nyo? Oh my God. The first time I ever felt, yung parang pag nagbabasa ka ng mga books, di ba yung sinasabing yung when you feel something heavy at the pit of your stomach, na parang nahulog or parang mabigat na sa... bumagsak. Yes. Yun. For the first time in my life, naramdaman ko. Na, May bumagsak yeah. sa loob nyo. May bumagsak na ang bigat dito talaga sa chan. Tapos syempre sabi ko, ikwento nyo na lang yung storya nyo. Ganyan, kinoconvince ko pa pero kidnap for ransom na to. Yun. So, tinawagan ko si Maria. Sabi ko, Maria, I'm so sorry. Am I fired? <laughs> yung pa yung una niyong sinabi. <laughs> Am I fired? Anong sabi niya? Siyempre kasi, di ba, yun nga, sinuway ko yung mga instructions nila, di ba? Parang, are you safe? Are you are you okay? You, stay, so, you were abducted have, for nine days. Yeah. Nine so, yeah, days. On the tenth day was when we were released. Released. Where did they bring you? Um, naglakad-lakad pa rin kami mm. sa place where the first... Meron pang... Meron sila mga pag-uusap na baka daw agawin kami ng another group. May mga ganun eh. Naiintindihan nyo yung... Si Tagalog ba yung um, pag-uusap nila? Sinasab... Hindi. Tausu. Pero mm. si Professor Dinampo nakakaintindi. So sinasabi niya parang... Meron pa silang fear na baka may kukuha sa amin na ibang grupo. May mga ganun. So the first... The second night... We were like, they were avoiding taking us to their campsite. Natulog kami sa lupa. So, so uh, may mga insekto noon, may mga lamok. Nakakatawa lamo. nga si Jimmy, my cameraman, sabi niya, baka pasukin ang langgam. Eh, may mga panty liners ako na pinagkakaingatan na, alam mo na, when you need it, <laughs> pinunit-punit namin para ilagay sa tenga. Tenga! Oh. <laughs> Oo. Uh, later on, sinita ko siya, tingnan mo! Nasayang lang yung <laughs> panty liner. <laughs> yun para yung hindi kayo unang, pasukin. Yeah, para hindi insecto. pasukin kasi sa lupa talaga. Lupa talaga kami yeah. natulog. Lupa, as in lupa. Anong pinapakain nila sa inyo? No? So yung una nga, isang platito, kala mo ko, tigi isa kami. Isang platito na, platito, na may konting noodles, may isang isdang maliit na ganyan, at konting kanin. Tapos, Sasaluhan pala namin yun. Isang yung plato, hindi man lang, hati kayong tatlo. Apat. apat. Pati si Professor Dinampo, di ba? Sabi ko, ay, yan lang ba? Ayoko, hindi ako kakain. Sa inyo na. Mm. Later on, sabi ko, that was wrong. You have to think of your survival. So kung pakainin ka, kumain ka, kasi kailangan mo ng lakas. Mm. So le, hindi na ako nag-ganon later on. Kumain ako ng ano, merong... Uh, kanin siya katoyo ang sarap pala ng kanin ng katoyo. katoyo super oh yung sarap <laughs> na enjoy niyo oo oh, oh. oh, oh. so anyway yeah later on sabi ko you have to think of how to survive walang arte arte yung so during the nine days what, were, what was going on inside your mind inside your heart so sure, sure, fear. there was fear but you know i was responsible for the two other ABS, I mean, my, my as cameraman and assistant cameraman, I could not, I had to be, I had to get myself together. I had to be, you know, strong for then, them. I was responsible for them. For so, their lives. Kung weak ako, di mahimpapapaghinaan na rin sila ng loob. I cried once. When was Only that? Only once. When was that time that you yeah. cried? Uh, nang galing ako sa banyo. Kasi wala naman doon, di ba? Answer the call of nature. So, binigyan ako ng bolo pang hukay ng butas at galon ng tubig at sabon. So, punta ka doon malayo. Tapos, ano bang pinasukan ko? My hmm. God, doon ako parang doon <gasps> na siya. Yeah, the gravity of what, the situation. Parang. So, bumalik ako umiiyak. Sabi sa akin, iniiyak-iyak mo dyan, ganun. Sabi ko, never na akong iiyak. Never. So, yun lang. And there was even a time when, you know, she's too hopeful. She's too optimistic. Dapat daw mawalan ako ng, parang mas madali daw mag, mag-negotiate. Kung parang kawawa ka. Yeah. Eh, but I never lost hope. In fact, 
masyado daw akong hopeful. Ako na yung nakikipag-negosyon. Uutang ako. May mga ganun ako sa kanila eh. Uutang ako. Kukuhaw na ako ng pera. Ganun. Ako magbabayad. Magkano bang hinihingi nila? The time, 20. Million pesos. Yeah. My strategy was, I'm, I'm powerful. I'm not naman powerful. I, may, parang, I'm strong. I can get out of this. Yun yung mindset niyo? Yeah, yeah. I, the only time nga that I really gave, parang thought that I could die here, yun nga, I, I wanted a dignified death. But I, I never thought, I never entertained the idea na walang hope. Pinatakot um, ka ba nila, Mrs.? Napapatayin ka na ay, namin? Ay, oo, oo. Every day? Merong, ano mga sinasabi nila sa'yo? There was a time kasi galit na galit sila sa napiling negotiator, so nagwala sila. We were so scared. At yun, sinabi sa akin, make up ka ng make up. Sige, mag-make up ka ng mabuti para maganda ang ulo mo pag in LBC sa ABS-CBN. Tsaka yung pinal tinalian yung dalawang cameraman ko, si Jamie at si Angel, tas pinaluhod sila, tas kinuha yung camera. Tapos sabi pa sa, sa akin ni Jimmy, may mga footage siya kung patago. So, takot na takot kami. Buti na hindi nila alam paano. Kinuha yung camera, tapos sinabi nila, o, oh, ikaw ah, isushoot mo ang pagpugot sa ulo ng kasama mo. Sinasabi yan? Yeah. So, we Pag were... Pag sinasabi nila yun, anong nararamdaman? Yes. Nanginig kayo? Alam mo yung time na nanginig ako? Eto, pumupuslit kasi ako ng text messages. Di ba yung cellphone noon, hindi na bubura yung text? Yes. Yung kailangan mo, physically mo ibura isa-isa? Yes. Ano ang mga tinitext yun? Yan, kunyari. Na? May mga clues ako na we're in this place, there are uh, like 15 caretakers, ibig sabihin guards, mga ganun-ganun. Sino tinitext nyo? My family. And, and I think it was Chari. So, so, oh, nagpapadala ako ng message ko niya, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos kukunin na. So, talagang doon lang ako talagang sobrang natakot. Na, nanginginig yung kamay ko. Asin, nginig, nanginig. Oh, yeah. Kasi, sa nervyos. Sa nervyos. Dahil papapakita na, na, nagpupusli, nagsasend ako ng text. There were many speculations, Mrs. Kung anong ginawa nila sa'yo. Was she raped? Did yeah. they abuse you? Yeah. Did that happen? You know, no. But you know what? I was really very upset at that morbid fascination. Because if I was, what? Are you gonna look at me differently? Parang people would whisper, ah, she was raped, she was raped. The possibility of me being raped was there, yes. But parang fascinated na fascinated ang mga tao. O, eh, 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 kung na-rape ako, o, oh, iba na ba ang tingin nyo sa akin ngayon? In kasalanan ko ba? na kung nangyari yun so sa akin, di ba? I was not. Thankfully, that was the second time that I felt that thing in the... Bumagsak? Bumagsak. Doon sa, ano na, inquest in Camp Krame. And the, for the very first time, rinibil ni Professor Dinampo na may mga nagpag-uusap na, na, na parang may isang miyembro doon na mag attempt. Yeah. Shocks. But while we were there, no, may suspicion ako dun sa isa, yung leader nila, who who lost a uh, part of his arm. Na parang masyadong malapit yung, kasi alam mo natulog kami dun sa parang hamok. Hmm. Yeah. Duyan. Duyan, oo. So, katabi, katabi ko siya. So, sabi ko, Anong gagawin ko kaya? So tumitingin ako yung bolo ang gagamitin ko, Papatayin hindi barel. Oo, oh, oh, syempre, di ba? Yung parang iniisip ko, barel, parang baka hindi ko pa alam paano paputukin, ganun yung at least yung bolo, di ba? Isang right away. Na, <laughs> kala mo na ba, di ba? Parang never ko pag ginawa yun, but I was thinking, survival. You know, yeah, I was, that's what I'll do. But they would always keep a light on me, eh. Parang kita kung anong ginagawa ko, or baka tumatakas na ako, gano'n. Inisip ko naman, paano ba ako tatakas dito? Saan ako pupunta? Yeah. Diba? During, Inisip ko one yes. time, there was another place kasi that they brought us to that was overlooking the sea. It was so beautiful. And I was thinking, kung gumulong-gulong ba ako sa baba nito at makarating dun sa beach, baka makatakas na ako. May mga gano'ng thoughts, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you think about your children? Of course, of course. I felt 
and my mom. Yeah. Hindi ba? Yung parang, if it, should, it was probably worse for them. Yeah. I felt so bad. Yung parang, they're probably wondering, you know, I felt very guilty putting them through that ordeal. So during those nine days that you were abducted, what were your prayers pag nagdadasal kayo? Strength nga to accept death with to be given dignity in case. In so case. yun ang dinadasal niyo? Yeah. To accept my death? If it comes. Parang prepare, you're just prepared. But I, of course, I was always hopeful that we will come out alive. And you came out alive and after I, nine days? Yeah. Nung una, galit na galit ako sa kanila kasi nung huling negosasyon, si Jimmy na yung parang may ultimatum na. Si Jimmy, kasi kaming dalawa na lang, di ba? And the professor. Galit na galit ako kasi he was like, talagang may mga please, may mga anak. Kasi inano na siya eh, tinali dito. Yung leg? Oo. Oo. So, but to put him in that situation, this man who's so honorable that he's begging for may mga anak ko kung hindi talagang lumuluhod sa kanila, talagang kung ano yung ano ginawa nila, di ba? Na nagmamakaawa siyang ganon eh, napaka honorable na napakabayet na to reduce him to beg. Parang, nice life. Yeah, I was so angry. So after that, tas tawag-tawag, may mga tawag. And then, binab some, one of those Abu Sayyaf uh, put the phone down, spat on the ground, and said, Laya na kayo. Nang palayain ng mga kidnapper si Angelo Valderrama, tuluyan na nga ang pinalaya si Nases. Kamusta yung reunion nyo with your kids nung yeah. nagkita kayo? Siyempre, iyakan. Siyempre. Hmm. Oo. Tinorture ko sila, di ba? Yeah. Yeah. Sobrang, you know. What was that feeling like to hug your kids again? No words to describe. And especially my mom. Your mom. My mom. Yeah. I remember hugging her so tightly. But very conscious na mabaho ako. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Naligo ako dun once lang. Sa so nine days? Yeah. So nasusunod? Yeah. So ang una-una ko talagang gustong gawin when I was released was to... Take a bath. Take a bath. How did that incident change you, Mrs.? That whole experience? Well, you, you know, you realize that life is so short. And minsan, you know, I felt very guilty because Sobra akong dedicated sa, sa trabaho na manonood na lang kami ng sine ng mga anak ko pag may tawag na may nangyayaring insidente sa kung saan lupalo, kakanselahin ko yung lakad namin. Sa anak mo? Yeah. So I felt na, you know, really value my family and to stop and smell the flowers. In, I mean, you know, not the world is you don't have to chase after all these stories humility because i had to i was suspended gratitude because so many people that i didn't know prayed for my safety and i i really believe yung power ng prayers ng ng lahat really helped Same. yeah saved me i learned i guess it was an, an important lesson one you know you learn from your mistakes of course but um, be more measured, be a little more cautious. Kasi ano ako eh, I'm such a risk taker. So I, I've learned to apply that in my life. Parang nagbago yung priorities after that incident. Yeah. Because before, diba, the priority was just to deliver the story, to work. I'm a broadcast yeah. journalist, this is my responsibility. Parang everything came second. Yeah. Your family, yeah. your health, your life. Yeah. So, I yeah. would postpone a dentist appointment. <laughs> For work? For work, yeah. Parang my job defined me. 
Parang yes. Ang ganda nung sinabi nyo sa isang interview, you said this, na in a lot of ways, I allowed my being a journalist to define me. Yeah. I was so single-minded. Yeah. It's just one aspect of me that's yeah. so beautiful. There are other things I neglected, like being a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend. When I was doing a story, that was the most important thing and everything else is took second priority. I said that. I always ask forgiveness for my sons kasi talagang naging ano sila. So yeah. if you were to put your life journey as a headline, <laughs> may naisip na ko kayo. Mm, ako. Parang says Drillon, unsinkable. Ka. Bakit? <laughs> Bakit? Eh, kasi pinaiyak mo ko.